Every year, thousands of children find themselves caught in bitter custody disputes between their estranged parents. Many of these children will experience the turmoil, disruption, loss of trust, fear and anger of suddenly finding themselves in a conflict of loyalty between their parents. Then, as so often happens, one parent begins the process of denigrating the other parent. They tell their children that the other parent is dead or no longer loves them. Sometimes children are whisked away to a distant place or even a foreign country. Parental alienation is but another form of child abuse. Already traumatized by the loss of one parent, these children now find themselves caught in an impossible situation from which they may never recover. Gone forever is their feeling of trust and intimacy. Gone forever is their sense of security and balance. Gone forever is their childhood. During this time in Oregon, the, where my father had access to my younger brother and myself, um, I'd say the build-up to these visitations was a key period for my mother to try and turn us against my father. The way I look back on it is that we were being treated uh, not as developing human beings, but as uh, weapons, weapons of emotional assault. would say it was difficult to understand at that age what was going on. And probably, yeah, I would say I blamed him. I've been taught to blame him. My mother and grandmother said he was going to kill us. I clearly remember my grandmother asking me if I wanted to move to Scotland to get away from my father. And I said I did. And uh, very shortly after that, I packed stuff into a car and drove to, I think it was Vancouver. I remember it was Vancouver, I flew from Vancouver. That was just like a game, just like a game. I, although at the time I stated I was in favour of this move, I now know that what happened was that I was abducted by my mother for the purpose of uh, preventing me ever seeing my father again. We got to New York and I don't remember too much about when we first arrived, what that was like or anything, but I remember just this hazy feeling of feeling really like, where are we? What's going on? Where's mom? Like something really didn't feel so right, but I, I don't remember too much about that. But I remember asking, I kept asking my father where mom is, and I trusted my dad, so I believed what he told me, and you know, he kept saying, she'll come, she'll come. Then eventually he told me that you know, she's not coming because she really, she really doesn't really want to come and see you anymore. We traveled around for 10 years. The most we stayed in one place was, was maybe six months, if that long. I couldn't talk about my mother at all with my father during any of that time, basically. I, I, he'd freeze up or get very angry or do something kind of scary, like throw something on the floor or, or just get really, really, really angry and really tense. So I couldn't, 
I couldn't say the M word. I mean, that was mom I, or mother. I couldn't bring it up, and it was, it was frightening. It was, and it reinforced her scariness to me. Or it felt so. She was the cause of, of that. Fear. It was her fault that my father would get angry and withdrawn. So it wasn't his fault. It became her fault in my mind. During that period, uh, between 10 and 16, when I didn't see my father in the six years, um, I wouldn't even consider asking my mother uh, for permission to go visit my father. I, I was afraid that, of the way she might react, be angry with me or say something like, you know, well, you, you can go, and why don't you just go live with your father then or whatever, you know. Uh, he's trying to impress you with all his money, but he's the one that that uh, walked out on you, remember, and I'm the one here, you know, working. <laughs> it was that kind of manipulation that she always used. To an extent, I, I feel that my mother was um, exp expressing her own needs through me in terms of, uh, you know, venting her anger. My mother really did get to my father by keeping us away from him, but she also hurt us and she hurt herself. So there are no winners in this situation. There really are no winners. As an adult, the separation from my father has affected me, I believe, and mostly a lack of self-esteem, a lack of trust. Here I am, I've just turned 43. I'm still not married, uh, not in a, in a meaningful relationship. I just put barriers. I just don't trust them. It has affected our lives as adults. You see, you know, I'd rather, you know, sometimes you wish you, you had, they hadn't had you, you know, you'd rather not be here. My mother created a situation which damaged us for the rest of our lives. It was very difficult at times to, to feel like a part of this person who'd been painted to be so evil or destructive. But somehow Norway was just sort of a blank spot on the map, or it was a place that I, I didn't want to go to, you know, just because of everything I'd been told about my mom and my Norwegian family. I think back to that little kid and I, I feel so much pain. Even the fact that I, I had had one perception of my father and his role in my life and how selfless he had been and how, it, you know, I, for years I thought how he put his child first and, and he did all this for my sake to protect me against this terrible mother. And then when that started changing, it just really screwed with my whole outlook on life and my own trust and my own perceptions in life. It led to a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety. I have trouble sleeping. I have nightmares sometimes. It's caused a tremendous amount of upheaval and pain. As the years went on, when I was a teenager, I um, tried to uh, eliminate any, anything that would give my past away as being American. I would certainly not tell anyone about it. And to this day, there's probably the majority of people I know know nothing of this, this story.
I would say the long-term effects of this for me, the enduring effects, there's still a self-doubt that can be crippling at times. You know, lack of confidence and an enduring sense of being an outsider. My mother dished out a 20 year sentence to my father. One that had consequences for all of us. And I think now she's maybe realising that the consequences of her actions are inescapable. Although I'm in contact with my father, basically still as a stranger, and I've cut off all contact with my mother.